Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 201 of Category 5 Technology TV. Nice to see you. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. How's your week going? Oh, good so far. Yeah? Yeah, I gave my life in order a little bit, so... You're getting all uh, unpacked and all yeah. set up? Yeah, you never really realize how much junk you have. Well, I should say junk. I want to keep most of it, but how much stuff you have <laughs> till you have to, like, haul it all the way across town, and I love That's it. That's what so. storage rooms are for, for me, is to, hmm. so that I don't have to realize how much junk I really so just have. <laughs> Keep squishing it in. Yeah, you know, here's another piece of hardware. I'm just kind of put that in the pile. Fantastic. Cool. How about you? Busy, busy? It's been very busy. Yeah, we've got, like, this is like birthday time of the year. <laughs> I think you know, you probably know if you yeah. follow me on Twitter, but it was like, it was, uh, well, it was your birthday first. Mm -hmm. It was my birthday. Mm -hmm. then Hillary. Hillary. Yeah. And then Becca. And then Zek. <laughs> my son Zek just turned Jeez. four yesterday. So we threw a little party for him, and cool. he had a lot of fun. If you're following me on Twitter, you you saw the uh, we got him one of those race car tracks where he where it zips around. Them. Oh, cool! So it's kind of tech. very cool. You can uh, you can see the photos on my TwitPic uh, profile, twitter.com/slash Robbie Ferguson. Um, speaking of TwitPic, we added TwitPic mm -hmm. to our website this week. You've probably noticed at category5.tv, we've got this uh, this guy down on the left hand. Twitter, it's a chance for you to still be able to get access to that. Cool, huh? Just realized that we don't have audio when we switch over there. This is the joys of oh. live broadcasting. <laughs> I was just saying, that's TwitPic. And uh, even if you don't follow us on Twitter, you'll be able to uh, access our Twitter profile by, by switching over there. Let's see if that works. There we go. And, uh, uh, okay, we'll get everything solved for sure. One more. <laughs> There. All right. So as I was saying, TwitPic is over here. So check out our website, category5.tv. And uh, anytime we post something from uh, one of the mobile devices or anything that goes up at uh, category5tv on Twitter, uh, it will go there. So kind of cool. So there's some behind-the-scenes pictures there, a video even of uh, the gang uh, having fun uh, during the show last week behind the scenes. So check that out. This week we've got a ton of viewer questions. I was seeing mm -hmm. your inbox there when you first logged in, and it's just ding, 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 yeah. email, email, email. So I know that uh, you've got a lot coming up. But, Absolutely. Uh, also, uh, as far as news goes, we'd love to hear what's uh, what's coming up in that sure. end of things. Let's have a look at that. So, as some of you may remember, uh, those of us who made it through last Thursday can tell generations that to come that we survived the hottest day ever. Linux 3.0 has been released, and while it's strikingly similar to Linux 2.6.5.3.2108, it's better. Sony continues to suffer since the big hack attack in April, but Xbox sales are through the roof. Stick around, these stories are coming up in under 30 minutes. Mm. Boy, it was hot last week. Oh, it was deathly, I swear. And just running around, I don't have air conditioning in my vehicle. Hmm. So we're, we're driving around, and we've got all three kids in the car, and Becca, myself driving, and I went to renew my plates and get there. Because, <laughs> you know, July, it's time to renew my plates, right? So um, get there, and uh, sure enough, we have to go in for an e-test. Love those. The van's more than five years old, and so it's time to go and get it checked yeah. out. You got all the kids in the car. It's like 250 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Mm -hmm. Seriously? So, needless to say, running, 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 trying to get everything done this week. It's uh, madness. My goodness. JVSCC is uh, observing that I, I had trouble determining what color shirt I would wear tonight, so I just mm -hmm. kind of split put it. Put them all together. Yeah, I just kind of got three <laughs> shirts and cut them up, and I just had all the time in the world, so I just sat there just and sewing stitched them it together. together. Yeah. yeah, I bet. With with my bare hands. <laughs> I'm all blistered. There's there's actually no back. Uh, you on Backstage Pass, you can see yeah. that I've got a bare back, but uh, I just, I ran out of time. Kind of like a hospital gown. What can I say, JVSCC? What can I say? Only the best <laughs> like for you guys. <laughs> Uh, and it's funny that 30 people just brought up Backstage Pass. <laughs> just 
Casey. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. Oh. oh, it'd be oh, funny dear. if it was. I'd be sitting a little further away, I think, if that was true. I'd be yeah. a little more comfortable with the I'm, I'm sitting on the leather chair. That wouldn't of your be, uh, that wouldn't be too <laughs> comfortable for sure. Anybody new joining us in the chat room for the first time tonight? Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, saw a couple of people that I didn't recognize there. Uh, let us know. Say Robbie F or The Krista. What's with that? The Krista. I felt like being awesome today. Someone else was Krista, and so you're the. Is yeah. it the or the? The. 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 Uh, the Krista. Well, I mean, that's more Canadian than the, isn't it? Right. <laughs> the Krista, eh? <laughs> Maybe next week. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh, we didn't get any viewer pictures this week. I'd love to get those from you. Of course, it's, it makes sense because last week was our 200th episode. Hard to believe. I, I was afraid I was going to say, this is episode number 190. Oh, wait. But no, I actually hmm. pulled it off. It's like that whole, you know, the McDonald's billionth burger kind of, or 100 billionth burger. You I'm, know, I'm Y2K. Familiar. Oh, really? Yeah. You remember the Y2K scare? Yeah. So I everything was, was going to go there. from 99 to 100 and everything was going to crash. Oh. Never right. Actually happened. Yeah, everyone's was so afraid. Yeah, you were like three, I think. So. Hey. Um, <laughs> how long ago how was that? Is. No, that was eleven years. Holy cow, that is really crazy. Eleven years. Um, but the McDonald's sign had ninety-nine billion burgers served. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing was that they were going to have a burger crash. Wow. When they served the hundred billion burger. Scary was, stuff. Anyways, how did how I get the world on that? Works. What was I talking about? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 200, and here we are at 201. But last week, you uh, you know, we didn't make a call for you to send in your viewer pictures or anything, so obviously nobody did. Uh, but I'll let you know this week. Send you uh, send a picture of yourself watching Category 5 TV. Email it to live at category5.tv. And when we get that, we're going to uh, we're keeping track of everybody who sends them in, and we're going to uh, award you with some viewer points. And as well, we're accumulating those. We're going to be putting together a photo gallery on our website as well. So. So, uh, lots of fun. Good way to get involved in the show. Thank you to everybody who uh, who has donated this week as well. Um, there are uh, several people as well who have subscribed to monthly donations. And so, we're being that they started that last month, we're starting to see those come in as well. And uh, we appreciate that very much. Um, it's it's so helpful with the you know the month to month expenses and things as well as, and I, I keep saying as well. I think mm -hmm. that's my crutch tonight. I'm gonna try <laughs> to avoid it. But uh, you know we have the issues with the servers. I think we are so close to finding a solution to that. Right now we're still on loaner hardware, um, and we're still trying to figure out the microphones and all this stuff. But your your continued support is is both encouraging and when it comes down to it and when the bills come in and when everything uh you know when it when it's all said and done it's so much less stress for us when when you know there's there's some money there that we can pay the the hosting bill pay for the domains when they come up for renewal things like that so i uh, just want to extend a big thanks to you and uh and also to those who are subscribed to monthly donations as well and there i said as well there i'll end with that <laughs> Last time. Last time. <laughs> Never let it happen again. <laughs> well, I was at the Data Connectors Conference in Toronto right. a couple weeks ago. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Again, if you follow me on Twitter, you already know this, and you've seen the pictures and all the fun things that happened there. Uh, but I met up with Jen from ESET, and that's the first time that I've ever actually met somebody from ESET. These are the makers of Nod32 Antivirus. Okay. Um, they create a, a great antivirus product. They have banner ads on our site, which I'd encourage you to click on because that supports the show as well as provides you with a great product. Uh, I'm very particular about who's allowed to advertise on the site, so much so that we actually pulled down, even though it was paying us, we pulled down the Google ad words or ad sense, the, the banner from Google, just because I didn't have enough control over who could advertise. Yeah. So, so know that the ads that are there, uh, we picked up B&H uh, audio video, uh, professional audio video suppliers uh, from the States. Um, they're advertising on our site. You see the banner uh, today. So make sure you click on those and check out the products. Um, just ways to support us. But as far as, um, oh, I'm going to have trouble tonight. <laughs> All right, where was I? Your sticky notes what don't look talking? very organized. My sticky there. notes are all over They're the place. <laughs> I'm serious. If you could see this. Cool. Sorry about the. Uh, as somebody's mentioned some audio issues. We'll we'll deal with that for sure. Still working with uh, with the hardware as we have it. So. 
Cool. Well, we can jump right into questions. Cool. Uh, if you are in the chat room and you got a question for us, let us know. Nobody said that they're new here? No, Did no anyone? one wants to admit that let they are know. new. All good, everyone? Yeah. Hey, Troy. Oh, we got guest 5324. Oh, D-Man's pretending. <laughs> hey, buddy. JVSCC thinks I should just put all the stickies on my forehead. Oh, that'd be a good place for them. It's too hot today. It wouldn't <laughs> stick. Well, then you could just, like, whichever one falls off first. That's how That's you go. Right. <laughs> okay, well, I know we're only five minutes in, but it's uh, it's time for the news. <laughs> well, all right. All right. Hey, Troy74. <laughs> Thanks, Chris Reich. What about Jedi Torv? Jedi Torv. Jedi Torv. Gadwell says he is new. Nice to see you. Nice to have you here. Well, we can jump right awesome. into questions then, if that's uh, if that's it in the chat room for the moment. Sure. So our first question tonight comes from Joe Cool. It says, is there a utility or script to turn my 11.04 into a server, or can I install LAMP onto 11.04 and tweak it to work? I am wanting to install and run a Dito, Dito SSL VPN. Thanks, Joe. All right. Uh, I would say your approach can be a little bit different these days because of virtualization so depending on what you have on your host a lot of times what we'll end up doing and the the quick answer to what you're what you're asking there yeah you could install lamp into a standard ubuntu installation or any linux uh, you can install the php5 meta package and that gives you apache and uh, php and then you can just install mysql you're good to go um, but what you can do instead to, to kind of keep things a little more controlled as you can go with appliances. Um, you'll see if you go onto our website, category5.tv. I'm going to just find the episode for you. And the way that we'll do that on our website, just scroll down a little ways on the home page and you'll see the search. Just type in, uh, well, let's do turnkey. There we go. Episode number 169, Turnkey Linux Lamp Stack. Click on Read More. And what this uh, episode covered is how to deploy a turnkey Linux server for a fra in a fraction of the time of a traditional build using turnkey Linux virtual appliances. Why that's advantageous for you to do that essentially is the amount of time that you're going to cut off of your build time using a, a, a turnkey appliance or any appliance for that matter, but turnkey is a, a fantastic um, group that, that assembles these for you. Out of the box, you fire it up and you've got your LAMP stack running. It's got PHP, it's got uh, MySQL, it's got Apache, it's running on a very bare, bare bones, um, uh, lightweight Linux uh, build. And as well, it comes with uh, a web interface called Webmin. So you can just uh, you can get it up and running, and then using your web browser, you can administer that entire server. It's got SSH, so you can SSH in just as if it was a physical box, and uh, and that works fantastically. It's it's so good that that I feel confident in recommending that as an alternative to just installing LAMP and getting LAMP going in your own PC, because that has its, its downside in that you're you're putting it on the actual. Um, on the actual metal of your, your system, like it's going as on your, your core OS. These days, because of the power of processors, you're, you're good to virtualize because then you can take that appliance and you can move it to another server, you can move it to another computer, or if your hard drive crashes, install VirtualBox on your laptop and move the, uh, the, the LAMP stack over to your laptop for a temporary time as you rebuild the server and you have little to no downtime. So really, really nice that way. So if you head on over to turnkeylinux.org, and you'll see there are a ton of different um, appliances to choose from. Appliance is basically a, a way for them to say it's a pre-built computer that runs in a virtual machine. So there's the LAMP stack, and you just grab that. Like I say, follow the episode uh, number 169, and we'll go through the whole thing. Um, and that's a, I think that's the route that I would go if I was going to be setting that up. It just gives you so much 
more than just a LAMP stack because you get Webmin, you get everything that's pre-configured and working, you've got the ability to host your own email at the domain, you can do all that stuff all through a web interface, so very, very nice. Cool. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, before we jump into the next question, there's actually mm -hmm. quite a few comments about the audio. Right What's now. up? So it sounds like there's some popping and, and some uh, popping. stuff like that. Really? They say they think it's my mic. Yeah, it's probably your mic. I'm the problem. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, well, I'll just give it a quick sound check. Check one, two, check, 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 check. Is that better? Check one, two. I'm not overloading, <laughs> so. Yeah, I know. Is that better? How about if you could give a sound check? Checking. Check, check. Hello. Is that better? Chat room? Oh, it happens when both of us are talking. Oh, okay, so let's talk. Talk, talk. Audio hello, in general. hello, hello. Hello. Did I do it? Or is it better now? Interesting to note. Talk to me, Krista. I, and I will talk at the same time. I don't know what to say. There's so many things. Seems okay. We Close can't really the lid on the Mac. Thanks. That's what was Thanks. causing the problem. <laughs> Dominic, is that better? Sorry, gang. Hmm. As long as it's bearable, I will continue. So you let me know. Because, you know, we're, we're live and that's a tough thing. If there's something going on. All right. Well, I'll try to ignore the popping and we will yeah. continue on. We'll do our best. Let's jump to the next question from Chris Reich. Uh, concerning the selection of an optimum video card for a new computer to be built running Linux exclusively, mm. much web searching has yielded only some buried hints that NVIDIA brand graphics cards are preferred as long as one uses the NVIDIA pro propriety driver. The best info I've found is from the Myth TV and Pharonix websites. The information offered is somewhat dated, however. Oh, somewhat dated, however. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> is there still a preference for NVIDIA brand graphics cards over AMD ATI cards when considering that either will exclusively be used for Linux? I'd appreciate your pearls of wisdom and sage advice on the relative merits of NVIDIA versus AMD ATI. Separate graphics cards for exclusive use by Linux. All my best, Chris Reich, Rochester, New York. He also wants to just chime in and say temperature at 1600 hours, local time is 80 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit. All right. Mm -hmm. So toasty. Thanks, Krista. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> NVIDIA versus ATI. You're going to get me in trouble here, Chris, because uh, uh, that that is a debate that's been long going. And I think you know from uh, from looking on the web that it's it's a debate that's been going on for forever. And people in the chat room are very quick to say NVIDIA. I'll tell you what happened, Chris. Back in the early days of computing when all of a sudden there was this boom that things were starting to go 3D, there was DirectX and there was OpenGL. OpenGL is an open source product. DirectX was developed by Microsoft. And as you know, Microsoft is not that, uh, despite what they'll say, they're, they're not that big of proponents of open source, at least certainly not at that time. So DirectX versus OpenGL, you've got ATI at that time, which is now owned by AMD, and they call them Radeon. Uh, the ATI cards went the, the route of really putting a solid focus on the Windows platform, which is to say they went the route of DirectX and making sure that their cards were the best possible cards they could be for DirectX. So for Windows, they were a great card. NVIDIA had a different approach in that they really put a solid focus, including providing drivers, uh, for the Linux platform or for open uh, platforms such as OpenGL, uh, to, to be more technical. So the progress of development went more the OpenGL route for NVIDIA, more the DirectX route for ATI at that time. So these were the early days, right? Since then, things have really s sort of changed because every card is basically capable of the same thing it's just that each one has its benefits and each one has its its downfalls nvidia cards uh... they have something called cuda cores which allows your your video card if it's an nvidia card to actually um, offload some of the cpu onto the gpu so when there are games or uh... visual applications that are able to tap into those cuda cores 
your CPU load time is, is going to go down. So the CPU is not having to run as high uh, because a lot of that, that work is being put onto the GPU. ATI, uh, you know, they've got cards that are, are just fine for both Windows and Linux now. Um, general, you know, Andrew Jameson, I think you've worked with some ATI cards. How did you find the experience? I've always found ATI not to be as out-of-the-box friendly on Linux. So that's the unbiased, just true, that's kind of how I saw it. If I were to uh, have an ATI card, which my wife's computer has, integrated, versus an NVIDIA card, which I have in all my computers because I choose to purchase those cards, um, when I've installed Linux on, on my wife's computer, it's more usually more challenging to get it set up the way that I want and less feature-rich on Linux. On Windows, they're, I'd say they're about equivalent. On Linux, I still say that NVIDIA is, uh, is going to win out. NVIDIA, of course, they've got NVIDIA settings. Everything is so easy to get and install. If you can't get the drivers to install just using the GUI, because when you boot into Ubuntu or any Linux distribution, it's probably going to detect that you've got an NVIDIA card and it's going to try to install the drivers for you, uh, the proprietary drivers. So you, you generally don't have any trouble. With 11.04, though, I did have trouble with my uh, my 460, my GTX 460 card, and its ability, the operating system's ability to detect and install the drivers automatically. So easy enough. I, I think I mentioned in a, a show a couple weeks ago, and and you can refer back to the show notes to find out. Um, e easily enough, I just I closed out of X. I ran the installer that you can download for free from Nvidia's website because they have the Linux drivers right there. Uh, and it installed, and then I didn't even restart my computer. I just reran X uh, after mod probing for the module for NVIDIA, and it, it just runs and works fantastically. So you'll see on my system now, it's pretty dreamy. The zoom effect that I have is all powered by my ability to have compositing and everything else that's a part of the 3D architecture. It's, it's just as simple as that. It's installed and it works. So, so I do think that NVIDIA cool. still kind of wins out. But where, you know, if, if you're getting into serious, serious gaming, then you need to look at benchmarks. Because if you're going to be dual booting, you want something that's going to uh, provide a good product for both Windows and Linux. I think NVIDIA is going to rule them all as far as that's concerned. And that's part opinion, but also experience based on slightly older hardware. So currently, I, I don't have, I haven't used a, a current... ATI card because I have no reason to. Uh, when I price out my video cards, I go straight for NVIDIA. So, uh, but I welcome comments in the chat room. Chris, uh, watch for those. Uh, Gadwill believes that ATI is actually easier to install by hand as far as drivers. NVIDIA can require some work to learn if you are new and having to install the drivers by hand. By hand meaning actually go into terminal and install them. That said, I think it was easy breezy. <laughs> But yeah, I can understand if people don't want to have to go into the terminal. And it definitely ATI wins out as far as GUI graph, uh, driver installation. Because NVIDIA does require, if you can't get it to work in the GUI, you have to fall back to the terminal. And basically uh, get out of X. Because you can't install them uh, within X from their website. So. so yeah, I hear you there, but that doesn't really speak anything of the quality of the video card. Emil1976, however, Chris, thinks that uh, ATI is faster for gaming. And I, and I think that's why I say, Emil, that when it, if you're going to be dual booting and you're going to be do, doing uh, heavy gaming, you really need to compare benchmarks and get apples to apples. Try to find a couple cards that are in your price range, ATI and NVIDIA, and compare um, their benchmarks, somebody who's actually uh, run some benchmark tests on those. But if you're going strictly Linux, which I think Chris is, then I would, uh, you know, chat room, tell me if you agree or disagree, but I think that NVIDIA would be the way to go. I, I do think that Gadwill makes a valid point that it's not always as easy to install as an ATI card as far as drivers go, but once it's up and running, it's it's flawless and, and works very, very well. And and uh, quite frankly, I love the interface of NVIDIA, NVIDIA settings because it gives me access to some of the more advanced features of my card. Gadwill has always had trouble installing NVIDIA through X. Perhaps it's the particular card that you're using? I never had that problem until 11.04. Chris Reich is not a gamer, so 
that's that's partially a deciding <laughs> factor. But like I say, these days it's so different, and I don't want to I, I don't want to ramble on too long for about video cards. But because everything is pretty much good these days, like even the Intel versus uh, AMD chips, it's like every one they're just so good these days. As long as you're not looking at the low low end, everything is pretty good. Um, so it's really just finding something that's in your price point and deciding you know what what way you want to go. And it's the same with video cards. Um, in the price point, they're probably going to be pretty similar, but I love having CUDA cores because our software Wirecast is able to tap into those in order to uh, uh, improve the video quality. So uh, we do a lot of video encoding, and that's uh, a really uh, excellent thing that NVIDIA does well. So cool. I'll, I'll welcome you in the chat room to continue the conversation, but we'll move on to the next uh, next question, uh, and then we've got uh, some time set aside for the news in just a few minutes. Sure. Thanks for the question, Chris. I hope that uh, that helps to some degree. All right. Well, here's a viewer suggestion from Gadwill. Cool. Uh, it says, Flux is an awesome tool to automatically dim one's monitor when it gets dark out or brighten it when it gets light out based on time. It's very neat, and the only drawback for it is you are watching the show, or if you are watching shows, netcast, movies, or gaming, then colors will start to look a little faded. But for general use, it is great. Also, it is 100% cross-platform with a GUI version uh, for Ubuntu on the site, source code for others to compile themselves. Mm. I'm also certain Fedora has a package somewhere, even though I can't find it since I don't know where to look. And for the Arch Linux, users wanting to know the AUR does have it in there does have it in there as flux GUI I believe and it's found at uh, HTTP stereopsis stereo stereopsis dot com slash flux oh you have it up there perfect yeah, there you go interesting uh, suggestion here and I wonder what the purpose would be other than now they say Basically, when you're looking at your computer monitor, just to summarize that um, at, at nighttime, you're, you know, your your eyes are tired, so to have the monitor up full brightness is really, really tough. And I can attest to that on the iPod Touch. Mm -hmm. The iPod Touch has a similar feature where as it gets brighter or darker, the screen actually changes brightness. Mm -hmm. And you experience that on your iPhone, I'm sure, too. Yeah. yeah my, my Mac actually does that as well. Your Mac does yeah. as well? So it uses the webcam or something? Or yeah, or? before, actually, my old one used to have sensors through the speakers. And if you had, this one obviously doesn't, if you covered the speakers, it actually dim, so you could see it do it right in front oh, yeah. of you. Yeah, it was strange. That makes sense. It was really strange. I don't know if it was intentional or not. But, uh, Be quiet. Whoa. <laughs> so dim. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so Flux apparently will do this for your PC mm -hmm. and for, and it has it for Mac as well. Uh, XP, Vista, Linux, whatever, mm -hmm. and we'll dim the screen based on time of day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could see that being useful if it provides power saving ability. Which you think it would on a laptop, Which you think would it, it would not? If it's actually toning down the bright brightness output oh, okay. rather than just overlaying like a darkness or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it would work, but okay. but then on a laptop you've got mm -hmm. the ability to dim it anyways. Yeah. You always do. Yeah. You see that little FN key on your keyboard. That's the function key. And then you got the little sun mm -hmm. with the arrow down and the sun with the arrow up. So you're able to do that without any software. Still, it's kind of nice not to have to think about it sometimes. I know you can override it on the Mac. So oh, my screen's so bright. <laughs> I wish sometimes. I had Flux installed so I didn't have to push function sun down. Is that what you mean? Smart ass. I know. <laughs> Come on, we're rated G. What I meant, <laughs> what she meant. was uh, sometimes I turn the, the brightness all the way up, and then if you're staring at it for so long, like I live behind my computer, yeah. and sometimes you notice that, yeah, my eyes are burning quite a bit, and, and uh, it would be nice if it would actually That's automatically, the cigars. automatically that revenge. do it. Revenge. Oh. Smoking Interesting, anyways. Horrible. It's uh, stereopsis.com <laughs> slash flux if you'd like to check that out. Cheers. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the tip. I was saying a little bit earlier that I went to the, the that's where I got my my mind was lost. But I was at uh, Data Connectors Conference in Toronto. A lot of fun. Met with Jen from ESET, and uh, because Macs have got viruses now, I picked up a copy of the. No, Mac. everyone has viruses. Not Linux, but uh, they do have a <laughs> Linux version. This is ESET <laughs> Cybersecurity for Mac, and it's available at SmartAntivirus.ca. Um, and you can get uh, the Windows edition. You can get uh, server protection. They've got a promotion on right now. If you uh, if you pop them an email, uh, they'll give you uh, six months of free service 
if you're a new business client and you uh, and you subscribe for um, I think it's if you subscribe for two years hmm. you only pay for 18 months oh that's not bad yeah so anyways so there's a copy for you this is a one-year subscription to the cybersecurity for Mac oh so that cool. will keep you safe very cool from all those nasty Thank you. Mac viruses but you know for the record Robbie is like a little child did you hear that Everyone I know, has but viruses. Where are you going with this? Not Linux. I'm just saying. I just had to. Just had to <laughs> yeah, but the whole just chat room. Went, yeah. <laughs> you tell her, Robbie. You tell her. Linux has no viruses because we're not gonna run as root. I'm just saying. There's like a couple Mac supporters in here. Okay. Every platform can have viruses if you're running as an administrative user. Plain and simple. But would you run Linux as root? Not a wise thing to do. And that's where Lindos, Linspire, people said, you know, this is never going to turn into anything because it was running this route. So, never, never happened. Anyways, I know you've got <laughs> news to talk about, so I'll let you take something, that away. Something a little more important. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's very important to learn about what's going on in the news. As always. Yeah, thanks, Krista. Great. So, a heat wave baked eastern parts of the U.S. and Canada late last week as temperatures surged the record-breaking highs in some parts. One New Yorker said being outside is like sitting in a sauna all day long. Hmm. The mercury in New Newark, New Jersey, reached 108 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 40 degrees Celsius, on Friday, the highest ever recorded in the city. In Canada, an extreme heat alert remained in effect, a day after two dozen cities and towns broke their previous single-day heat records. Stay cool, my babies. Stay cool. Linus Torvalds announced on Thursday that gone are the 2.6 insert big number here days. I'm supposed to insert a big number there, aren't I? 2.6.8.43, okay, and 3.0 <laughs> is out. Speaking of the release of Linux 3.0, while there are no special landmark features or incompatibilities related to the version number change, it's simply a way to drop an inconvenient numbering system in honor of 20 years of Linux. In April, Sony discovered that hackers, is, hackers had gained access to 77 million users' accounts on its PlayStation network. The PlayStation Network was shut down worldwide for more than a month while Sony reviewed its security procedures. They agreed to pay anyone who lost out financially as a result of the incident, but even now, they're still being sued by a number of users. Sony faces a court battle over how it will pay for legal claims made in the wake of a massive data breach, and even one of the company's insurers has asked a judge to rule that they are not liable for losses related to the cyber attack. The devastating blow to Sony is still playing out as sales of Microsoft's Xbox system are through the roof, helping push their profits to the highest ever, with reported 69.94 billion net income this boy. year. Holy smokes. Boy, oh boy. Cut the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions uh, by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email us at newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Chris Wells. Thanks, Krista. This episode of Category 5 TV is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug at cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. And as well, uh, you'll find... Uh, Planet Calypso, uh, you can download for free from cat5.tv slash Calypso. Can I ask you a, an off favor that is just hmm. kind of weird, but that camera that's on the top there, the, the, the Canon mm -hmm. uh, EOS, if you could power that off and turn it back on for me while I speak sure. to the, uh, the users. Thanks, Krista. Because <laughs> sometimes things don't always work the way that they're supposed to. She even knew where the power switch was. You've done this before. Oh, right? I have one. Thank you so much. Oh, you have one. Yeah. Cool. That's the EOS Rebel. It's smarter than I look. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy news about uh, Sony and, and going through all that. I, I, I know. That it was, was kind of expected. Yeah. yeah. I knew that this was going to be just like, oh my, like this is so big. Thinking back in April mm -hmm. when two weeks had gone by, I'm like, this could be the the end. Like, and then uh, and I I really regret to 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 bring it up, but the the tsunami and everything and, and mm -hmm. everything like how many blows can this company take yeah exactly <laughs> and and it's like and now microsoft is rising up and and 
showing mm-hmm. numbers like that and saying, well, our Xbox is doing fantastic. In fact, this is the most profitable year that we have ever had. Of course. <laughs> That's insane. Mm-hmm. And a little frightening because I, I think of Microsoft and the, oh, yeah, sure, they brought out Windows 7 and it's, you know, they've got it on pretty much every desktop in the super centers, but, you know, I guess I'm a little bit separate from that because I run Linux on all my systems, mm-hmm. except I've got one Windows 7 system. So, but they're doing well. <laughs> what are your thoughts about that? Post in the chat room, category 5.tv. Tonight, I wanted to, uh, Take a quick look. Uh, We were talking a while back, Eric and I, about uh, protecting our systems and and what we need to do in order to uh, protect ourselves from power surges and things Mm -hmm. like that. We looked at all different power bars and understanding a little bit about how many joules we can handle through our our surge suppressors and things and and looking at some UPSs. But the problem with a lot of UPSs is that they don't have a lot of power protection beyond just if the power goes out, your power stays on. Mm -hmm. But... If there's a really bad surge, it probably won't protect you too well. Uh, Inwalk CyberPower, who is uh, available pretty much all over, but now in uh, Canada, U.S., and I picked up this for the studio. I know you can't see me now. This is a 1500 volt amp, uh, so that means about 170 minutes worth of battery backup. Uh, on a a normal system. That's a lot of battery backup, but it's also 900 watts. And you'll remember that our uh, our system here, for example, is 850 watts, and this thing is super, uh, super powerful as far as that goes. But what's really impressive, if we look at the specs, is that it also protects against 1,500 joules. So that's how, you know, a pretty good-sized spike. A lot of times the UPSs are going to start around 400 joules. But also, even though it's a, a decent one, you'll see here... I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but Krista can see that in front of me. Mm-hmm. It's five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand dollar connected equipment guarantee, mm-hmm. and that's lifetime. So what that means to to us, and what that would mean to you, as you're looking for reliable battery backup, uh, reliable um, surge protection, is the fact that here's uh, a device that says, okay, well we we believe in our device so much that if your stuff gets fried that's connected to it, we'll cover you up to five hundred thousand dollars. So that's pretty fantastic. Pretty good, it's yeah. like it, you're you're buying into insurance, so you would think that it would be super expensive. The unit's only 220 bucks, is what they suggest the the price is on their website. Um, and there's so much about it. I'd encourage you to check out their their product lines. Cyberpowersystems.com. And um, what's really unique about them is that they're developing technology for UPSs that really generally only falls under the higher end UPS market Mm -hmm. for a lot more money. And essentially they're falling in, you know, 40% to 50% cheaper and even more than that than than competitive products as well. Anybody here uh, who's used a a CyberPower UPS before? I'd encourage you to pop us a message on the chat room. I've actually got the device here and you were picking it up earlier. It's pretty heavy. It's really heavy. (laughs) Oh boy. But it's small. It looks good. There we go. And what's really cool about this, as I say, it's, it's got some features that you would expect from a higher price Christ. model. If, if I, I power, power this on, and I'm just on battery, battery right, right now, now you, you see the first thing, thing that it shows, shows is steady voltage, voltage at 120 volts. volts. Shows, shows your battery, battery level, level up here. here. Each and, and the, the indicators, indicators on the display, display you don't need any software, software installed on your computer if you don't want, because it tells you everything right here. There's our voltage. There's, There's how many, many hertz, hertz uh, the hertz, hertz rating that it's running at, at, at present. This, this is very cool. cool. This, this shows, shows how many kilowatt hours you're actually, actually drawing from the UPS at that time. time. So, so that, that basically will help you to budget and understand, understand how much uh, your hardware, hardware is costing you because you know perhaps you're paying 10 cents a kilowatt hour. hour. Uh, to your hydro company. company. So, so that's, that's very, very, very useful, useful data, data that normally you have to pay almost as much as the UPS itself just for a device to be able to tell. Here, Here is, is the, the current uh, the current load, load which is of course zero, because I don't have anything plugged into it. And then this is actually the estimated time. So you see 100, and that is actually 100 minutes. So it's telling me that with my current load, which is nothing, I've got about 100 minutes worth of battery backup. And that will actually take into account 
the load. So if I plug something into it, that number will go down. And uh, really, really quite impressive. This one here, let's see. Oh, that's the estimated run time right there. 105 minutes, sorry. So hard to see in the screen. So <clears throat> pretty cool as far as that goes. There we go. Sorry, guy. So it's a good unit, um, but they also have drivers for Linux. Uh, not just drivers, but their software is available as a download off of their website for Linux. They're specifically supporting um, Linux users with software for that. Uh, but also it's uh, one of the first UPSs. This is what I mean. They're kind of cutting edge. One of the first UPSs that uh, is completely compliant with ROHS as well as being recognized as being environmentally friendly and um, it will actually save you between 70 and $75 per year to run this wow. UPS versus a different UPS. Reason for that, as you know, is that um, UPSs and power transformers, anything that has a transformer in it is always discarding um, power. So anytime the transformer is running, you're actually using power. It, it doesn't matter if it's actually, if you've got your devices on, if the transformer is running, it's using power. Um, so traditional UPSs are constantly running the power through the transformer, through the batteries, and out the other side. So you're always wasting electricity. So this particular unit is um, <coughs> has a bypass system that is uh, that's specific to cyber power. And what happens is, is when it, when it's not necessary for it to be using the transformer, it doesn't. So it's when, really cool feature. yeah, when hydro is reliable, so you've got stable hydro 88% of the time, say, uh, the rest of the time, it may need to switch over to battery for power spikes or power drops. Uh, but in the case where, well, power is fine right now, you're getting a steady 110 volts in our case here in Canada. Uh, it doesn't need to be running through the transformer. And so it doesn't. And it saves you. Um, like I say, it, it, it will be running without the transformer about 88% of the time. So very impressive uh, technology for the price. Again, 220 bucks at cyberpowersystems.com. Encourage you to check them out and, and certainly price them out as you're looking at uh, any battery backup solution. I would compare uh, the pricing to CyberPower. And uh, with that guarantee, I feel confident now that uh, you know with the surges that we've been through, I, I, I had to put my foot down and I had to say, like, this is ridiculous. We've lost so much equipment over the years to surges because we're always buying the high-end UPSs because they're supposed to last longer and, and do better. Mm -hmm. But they don't come with a guarantee and they don't, they don't provide the same kind of quality power. They do pretty well, but come you know with a great big surge. Apparently, they don't work too well because we've lost Obviously, you know, our yeah. server <laughs> and a couple microphones and a bunch of other stuff. So, <clears throat> cool. So that's uh, that. Ours is the fifteen hundred watt, uh, fifteen hundred volt amp um, with the nine hundred watt uh, power. You'll find that at cyberpowersystems.com, and I'll put a link to our specific model uh, in the show notes of Category Five Technology TV episode number two hundred one. Cool. Category5.tv is where you'll find uh, more information about the show. We'd love to uh, have you join us there, join the community. It's a free service, and we'd uh, encourage you to, to actually register on our website for your chance to get some viewer points and uh, participate in the community in, uh, in a more solid way. And we'd love to hear from you when you're, when you're joining us and let us know that, uh, that you're new here. Did, uh, did we miss any questions in the, uh, in the chat room there? Just uh, I see, see a couple questions that I, I'm not quite so sure. Like Sammy says, said how big? How yeah, big? you I'm answered that, sure. didn't you? How big? Uh, do you mean like the volt amps, or or um, uh, what do you mean by how big? <clears throat> it's 1500 volt amps uh, with 900 watts. So it's pretty substantial as far as power goes. Um, that'll power a, a, a fair a fair system. Like that'll power our system, no problem. One of them. <clears throat> UPS is 900 watts. So keep that in mind, a Andrew. You were you were looking um, in the chat room. You were you were looking at getting a power supply for your computer that was in the 1200 watt range, uh, which seems a little excessive to me for a, a standard PC. Um, but keep in mind that if you put something like that on your system, then you're going to have to battery back up that, and you're looking at way more money potentially to to put a UPS on something that's pulling that many watts. Ours is 850 watts here. And the UPS powers 900 watts, 
so we should do just fine. <clears throat> cool. The price of that, Sammy okay. says, was 220 bucks. That's the MSRP off of their website. We'll post links. But you can pick them up. Uh, you, you can get them at any store in North America, I think. Or at least on, definitely online. They're, they're a growing company. They've, uh, they've really been doing, doing well to expand their company, and, and so we're starting to see more and more of it. Uh, Joe Hay uh, he does this to me every time. <laughs> Joe Harry Edgar. Joe Harry Edgar. Uh -huh. um, that is his rapper name. Um, <laughs> our Linux distributions uh, features are going to be commencing in two weeks time. So not next week, but the following week. Uh, quite potentially. Now we are looking to get the new server hardware. I hope to get that built. Um, that's when things are really going to be able to get back on track as far as running everything and making it work. So. Cool. I think some people are getting some lag in the chat room because questions are coming in a little uh -huh. ways after I've already answered them. So, uh, so do if you missed uh, the answers about price and things like that, make sure you uh, check back at the video or someone in the chat room can answer for you. So, we must have right. a couple more questions. Oh, sure. we have lots of questions. Thanks, Krista. Thanks everybody for sending in your questions live at Category Five TV. So our next question here. Uh, to Robbie says, I am a disabled person living in Los Angeles, California, and TV viewing is my primary companion. Therefore, this is also very important to me. I now have Time Warner cable service, but due to economic hardship, I can no longer afford to pay for cable TV. Therefore, I would like to change to free internet TV programming via my computer and watch it on my TV. I have tried to do as much research as I can on how best to do this. It seems to me that the new BoxyBox by D-Link might be the perfect solution. My TV is a Panasonic model TH50PX80U Plasma TV. Filo is my computer information. I will also include the computer inf oh, the com my computer information below for your review. I would like to know if you think that an HDMI cable connection from my computer to my TV would be fine and would a Wi-Fi wireless setup be better? I have a second TV in an adjoining room, and I am wondering if there is a way that I can receive the same video on that TV also, and if so, what would that require? Simultaneously, or just in general? If it's at the same time, it might be a little more difficult, but we'll talk about that, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm making notes here. Sounds like a lot of questions. Okay, I watched your online <laughs> video answering questions and trust your judgment and expertise, and thought I would try to contact you and ask you for your advice. Would you please advise me on whether this is the best way to go? If you have any technical suggestions regarding any aspect of the plan change, I would be extremely grateful. I am hoping that I will hear from you, and thank you for your time and advice. Sincerely yours, N. Bullard. Okay, yeah, thanks so much for the questions. <clears throat> I'll do my best. Any suggestions in the chat room, uh, I welcome them as well. I'm looking for your TV um, on the web, just because that's going to help me to see what kind of um, inputs you have. Now you mentioned HDMI, so I presume that you actually do have an HDMI input mm -hmm. on your TV. Um, quite often you're only going to have one of them. Uh, my first question, that I, I made some notes here as Krista was reading your question there for you, um, is do you have unlimited bandwidth on your internet connection? Because as you talk about Time Warner costing money, and, and I understand cable TV can be very expensive. Uh, especially if you've got some of the you know the movie bundles and additional uh, channels and things like that, digital cable and having to rent the box and things. So the question becomes, if you get one of these internet boxes that's going to allow you to stream it through your internet, are you going to have to pay more to your internet provider for the bandwidth? Um, so that's my first question for you because if it cancels itself out, then it's probably not worth it. If, if you find that, oh, well, to watch it online is actually costing me just as much money as having it on cable, then really all you're doing is... is moving the, the cost over to a different company. So that, that's a very important question. Um, your TV, HDMI input with an HDMI output on any computer, definitely cool. Uh, you're going to get uh, 1080p resolution on that. Um, I'm not sure what resolution your, your TV is, but I'd expect that you're going to get as good of a resolution as you're going to be able to support on your TV. <clears throat> BoxyBox is a fantastic um, device, and there are other devices as well out there. I would encourage you to shop around before you settle and find out, the best thing to do is find out what programming is available to you. What you need to understand when you get into something like this, okay, so here's the boxy box for example. When you get purchasing a 
Oh, they're getting rid of that. Okay, there's the actual boxy there. That one, okay, so boxy box there, you can see it there. One of the, the biffs that people have with that is the shape. If you have a traditional kind of entertainment center, it's not going to work very well. You've got a flat screen TV, so chances are you've, you've got like a table or something like that. This is not going to fit into where your VCR or DVD player used to used to go because of the, the plain shape of it, right? It takes up a lot, you know, a little bit more kind of weird dimension, um, so you can't stack things on top of it and stuff. Boxy box, Roku. Uh, there are a variety of different devices. Um, suggestions in the chat room. Let us know what you like. The the thing about these devices is they're not going to give you the same programming as your TV, as you understand. So Time Warner gives you your specific shows if you like to watch. Uh, House or what's some good shows? You probably like the kids like hmm. Sesame Street, but all these shows are not the necessarily head, actually watch. House might be, but some of the shows are not going to be available to you. One of the advantages are sometimes you can get around um, commercials and things like that. But what you want to do is find out what shows do these devices have. You're going to find this on their websites. Boxy, for example. You see that they have partners with Netflix, so that means that you're going to be able to rent movies on it. That's pretty cool. Also, a lot of shows are available on Netflix. That's a good bonus feature. Also, Category 5 TV is available on uh, on the Boxy Box. We're available on a, a ton of different devices. But you can actually watch Category 5 through that device. But is it necessary? What you need to determine, you're talking about having two computers. Um, do you hook up a computer to your TV at all? or Not often. No. no. I'll tell you what I do, and sorry, I didn't catch the name because I think you just signed it with your initial, but what I do is my wife's computer's in the living room, and we have that computer actually connected to the TV, so when she's not using it, it becomes something that we can pull up on the TV screen just by switching to that input. Advantage to that is I don't need extra hardware. We're using hardware that already exists, and the other advantage is we're not limited to the programming that's provided to us. We can download um, through Miro Internet TV, which is a free application, any of the software that we, uh, let's go, for example, uh, get Miro. Let's actually show you the software. And actually just go to Miro. Miro is a free piece of software that allows you to subscribe to all different shows. So what happens with this software, you install this on your computer, and it allows your, you, you basically tell your computer, okay, I like this show, I like this show, I like this show, and every time that show brings out a new episode, it automatically downloads it to your hard drive, to that computer. So you want to have quite a bit of hard drive space, or a server, or something like that, or something on the network. But to get you started, you can just install Miro, connect that computer or a laptop to the, uh, to the TV with Miro installed, and subscribe to your favorite channels. There's a lot of great channels there. Check out uh, Miro Guide at MiroGuide.com. M-I-R-O-G-U-I-D-E.com. If it comes up for me, you can actually go through and and see what shows are available on uh, on Miro. You'll see that there are genres over on the right-hand side here, and the form, you know, the layout could change by the time you see this or whatever. So, if you go in, for example, to technology, you'll see that there are a ton of shows that are available regarding technology, and you will find that Category Five is a part of that list. So, you want to watch Category Five, for example. There's one of Category Five's feeds. We've got uh, a few depending on the quality that you'd like. Um, so, there are different options. I think connecting a computer to your TV to start is the, the best starting place because then you're doing it with existing hardware. Do it through HDMI because that's going to give you the best quality. Get Miro Internet TV installed, uh, free software. It will let you subscribe to a ton of different shows. Just watch. If you, if you subscribe to 10 shows, you're going to be downloading you know 10 episodes as they come out. If you subscribe to 100, you may think, well, there's 100 really great looking shows, but that's a lot of hard drive space potentially. So. Um, and you want to look for ones that have the HD logo. So you'll see on the Miro guide that, you know, this one, for example, has HD logo, but this one here with Category 5 does not. So we do have HD feeds in Miro, so you want to find the one that, uh, that actually has the HD feed in order to get the best quality because you're watching it on a nice big screen TV. You want it to be really good. So uh, check the chat logs. I think there's some suggestions there for you uh, as well. Um, 
Emil 1976, we are on XPMC. Yeah, we're available on pretty much any device except for uh, TiVo. Cool. And, of course, if your device doesn't have Category 5 TV, you can always uh, subscribe to it uh, through through our RSS feeds. You can get those on our website, category5.tv. Click on Watch the Show, and you'll see um, the ability to subscribe to the actual show itself. Uh, that is on our, our site called Subscriptions and RSS Feeds. That just lets you actually get the show on other devices. If you have a an iTunes-compatible device, you'll be happy to know that ca Category 5... Uh, has been renewed on iTunes. So if you actually go over to cat5.tv slash iTunes, just like it sounds, okay? As soon as you go there, if you're using uh, you know, an iPhone or iPod Touch or Mac, anything, even a Windows system that has iTunes installed, you'll be able to get the best quality uh, copies of Category 5 TV. Um, so there are so many different ways that you can get shows like Category 5 and, and other shows out there as well, but just know that you'll probably be seeing different programming, so you'll have to get used to the fact that your shows are a little bit different, and you'll, you'll learn to weed out the ones that, um, that you find, you know, a lot of times, a lot of, uh, one of the problems with internet TV uh, that, uh, that you'll find as you start to get into it is that a lot of shows are clip shows, and you get a lot of these little five-minute segments, so it sounds like a great show, but it's only five minutes long, and you, you want to sit down with a bowl of popcorn and, and enjoy yourself, To eat right? it really, really fast. Yeah. Done. It's fine. Liquid popcorn. <laughs> Not the same. Chris Reich, on the other hand, much more than popcorn. <laughs> All right, gang. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that that kind of helps uh, point you in the, in the direction that you need to go. But if you have more questions, let us know. I, I hope that that is helpful. I think that it could be. So. Sounded good. I think that's a good starting point. And then if you decide to install hardware, if you think it's working for you, then go with something like uh, like the BoxyBox or Roku, something like that. Wi-Fi is probably not the best. It's going to be slow. But it's convenient. If your laptop has it, go for it. Um, but as far as actual streaming video through Wi-Fi, it could be a little bit slow. But you could always try it. It's not too bad. I don't get, we don't get very good Wi-Fi here because there's so many signals, but you may have better, better luck. So. Mm -hmm. Second TV, um, just to, I'm just looking at my notes here, final, final note was uh, if you can stream it to your second TV, you can do that through, uh, through Wi-Fi, like D-sub connectors or something, RCA, but you're not going to get very good quality. You're best just to have two different, like two, two laptops, for example, or two boxy boxes, um, something like that. Uh, by the time you run a 50-foot HDMI cable, it's so expensive to buy that cable, you might as well have bought the box itself. It would be about the same price, and then you can just tune in. But it'll use twice as much bandwidth if you're not using a centralized server. Miro, if you get down to it, you could put a uh, centralized, com like a, call it a server, but a computer with a big old hard drive and tell it to download, and then you could put a couple of cheap computers on the TVs and, and connect them to the server, so it's only downloading to the server, for example. So iTunes is not available for Linux now, unfortunately. There are alternatives, uh, but it's not the iTunes store. And um, But you can install VirtualBox and install Windows XP or Windows 7 into that, and, and you've got access to installing anything like that. Well, we're just about out of time. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Have we, have we covered everything, I guess? Pretty much, eh? I think that was pretty much <laughs> Thanks it. Thanks for hanging out with us today, man. <laughs> it has been a, a mad week, I'll be honest, and, and I was running around today. Uh, we're trying to get this microphone situation solved, and I understand there's been some audio issues to this this evening, and and uh, we've got the, the wonderful team at Music Pro on the south end of Barrie. Go say hi and thanks to them. They're trying so hard to get to the bottom of this for us, it's so much so that they even, they even fabricated cables for us. <laughs> so we've got these adapters that they've they've made for us for these microphones to try to make them work. Wow! And they don't work. So, <laughs> so I, you know, we're still. It was back. a nice gesture. It was a very <laughs> nice gesture, and, and it, they're trying so hard to help us get this thing solved, and licked and done, mm -hmm. and you know, so running around and driving around to to get all this stuff, and and then finding that we're still not getting any further. So, 
So we're, we're taking taking our time as best we can, but at the same time pushing forward and trying to get things resolved. So I appreciate your patience through that, uh, as well as your support, and um, and uh, we'll, we'll get through it. So I think one of the uh, cool things that you can do as well, you notice the banner ads and stuff on our website. Make sure you click on those and support our advertisers. Uh, we have some fantastic opportunities to work with some wonderful advertisers, but it's very important that our viewers respond to those advertisers so that they know that, uh, that you're actually interested in the products that they carry. For example, if we have an ad on our website for a particular product, B&H Photo Video, for example, they are a fantastic store that ships all over. We order stuff from there, even though they're in the States, and we get it very, very quickly up here in Canada. Rather than going to their website, please click on their banner on our website because they're they're watching that stuff and they they see that you actually followed through the the banner click and based on that, that will determine you know where their support goes and and that indirectly you know if you're going to buy a, a digital camera, there's a chance for you to support us indirectly because you're getting a great deal because they've got really good prices, uh, but at the same time you'll be supporting the show as well because they'll say oh this came from category 5 and they slip a little bit of money in our account so it works very well hmm. Hmm. very convenient so yeah <laughs> so so think about that as you see the banners it's very important that uh, you know uh, that people click on those and, and support us in that way and it's such an easy way for you to support us and so I appreciate uh, you just taking the time and, and if you find a product that you like that you've seen on the show make sure you even pop them an email and say hey I heard of you guys on the show even if you can't ship to you know wherever you're located, just wanted to say, it looks like you've got a great product, and 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 you know pop them an email and let them know that you appreciate them advertising here on Category Five, and that encourages them again to to continue supporting us. So, thanks everybody. Have a wonderful wonderful week. Time really really flies. And uh, you're on vacation next I'm week. I'm on vacation. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Gonna head. Uh, head I'm out going west. Uh, back to my homeland. Yeah. So like. Yeah. This is like on another planet. Yes. Well, Understood. you know, I've actually had friends that ask me like, what country or why did you come to Canada? And you know, I'm I'm actually from from Canada. Mm. You know, it's Saskatchewan. We're actually in the middle of Canada, believe it or not. So, yeah, I'm gonna go visit some folks. We love you, Saskatchewan. Hang on to your socks, Saskatchewan. You're about to get <laughs> rocked. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> boy. All right. You'll see Krista there uh, next week. You'll see me here next week. And uh, also Hillary will be joining us next week. We're going to be looking oh, at a very cool motocross uh, video camera. Oh, mask way cool. <laughs> so that you can film as you're doing extreme sports. So cool. definitely uh, join us next so week. Tune in. And you uh, have a nice trip? I will. It'll be fantastic. Yeah. Good, good. I'll miss you guys, I promise. Yeah, of course. I'll miss you this week. See ya. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you next Tuesday night. Bye bye. Bye.